REST, or RESTful APIs are the most common communication standard between computers, often a client and a server, over the internet. So what is it? Why is it so popular? And how can you describe it in a systems design interview? Hi, this is Sean from TryAccept. To support the channel, please subscribe and go to tryaccept.io for our interview prep platform. So what is REST? REST stands for Representational State Transfer, and it has become the dominant architectural style for web services and APIs, used by effectively all tech companies from Google to Stripe. REST provides a set of constraints that, when applied correctly, create scalable, flexible, and maintainable web services. Okay, so let's go through the core principles of REST. We're going to use our pet API as an example. It allows users to store information about their pets. First, client-server architecture. In REST, a clear separation exists between clients, the user interfaces and consumers, such as your Instagram app, and servers, allowing each to evolve independently of each other. In our example, the mobile app that pet owners use can be updated with a new interface and features without changing the pet API server. Similarly, the server can be upgraded without requiring updates to the mobile app, as long as the API contract remains the same. Next, statelessness. Each request from the client to the server must contain all information needed to understand and complete the request. The server doesn't store client context between requests, which simplifies server design and improves scalability. In essence, each request is isolated. In our pet example, let's say the client wants to register their dog, Bronto. In a REST API, we would send across all required information at once. So that includes authentication tokens and all of Bronto's information in one go. The server doesn't remember previous requests about Bronto. So when doing any single operation, you must send across all information for that operation in one go. Next, REST recommends a resource-based approach. Everything in REST is considered a resource, identified by a unique URI. Resources can be represented in various formats. In our example, each pet is a resource with its own URI. So for example, pets Bronto identifies the specific dog Bronto. Pets Bronto vaccinations represents Bronto's vaccination history and pets Bronto appointments represents Bronto's vet appointments. Following this, we have uniform interface. REST services provide a standardized way to interact with resources through four primary operations that map to HTTP methods. These four primary methods are get, post, put, and delete. For example, if we send a get request to pets Bronto, we would retrieve Bronto's information. If we did a post request to pets, we could register a new pet with details in the request body. If we sent a put request to pets Bronto, this would update all of Bronto's information, such as vaccination status, weight, or more. And finally, we have delete, which when invoked on pets Bronto would remove Bronto from the system. Next, REST recommends cacheability. Responses must define themselves as cacheable or non-cacheable to prevent clients from reusing stale data or calling the API too frequently. So for example, when retrieving Bronto's basic profile information, such as date of birth, that rarely or never changes, the API can include cache headers indicating the response can be cached for 24 hours. However, for Bronto's health status, that might change frequently. The response would include headers indicating no caching or very short cache duration. Finally, layered system. A client cannot ordinarily tell whether it is connected directly to the end server or to an intermediary along the way. Earlier, we saw that the client connected straight to the API, but that might not be the case. The pet owner's app might connect to an API gateway that handles authentication and then connects to the actual pet API server. The client doesn't need to know about these layers. It simply makes 
a request to what appears to be a single endpoint. So if your API meets these requirements, then it is a RESTful API. So the next question is why is this so popular? Why does everyone use these standards? Well, REST's popularity stems from several key advantages. First, simplicity. REST leverages existing web standards such as HTTP and URLs that developers already understand, creating a low barrier to entry and making hiring and training new members or employees a lot easier. Next, flexibility in data formats. REST isn't tied to any particular data format, though JSON has become the de facto standard for most implementations. However, you can use other formats such as XML. Typically, REST APIs have higher performance. Through features like caching and the efficient use of HTTP, REST services can deliver excellent performance for many use cases. Furthermore, the stateless nature of it allows them to horizontally scale easier than other paradigms. Next, developer experience. The resource-orientated approach maps naturally to how developers think about data, making APIs intuitive to use. This is a bit of a chicken and egg here. Maybe we find it easy because it's the standard, or did it become the standard because it was easy? Let me know in the comments what you think. Okay, so next we have ecosystem support. So extensive tooling exists for building, testing, and documenting REST APIs. From Swagger and Open API specifications to client libraries in virtually every programming language, so it has really good support. And finally, platform independence. REST services can be consumed by any client that understands HTTP, whether it's a web browser, mobile app, Internet of Things device, or another server. REST's alignment with the fundamental architecture of the web has made it particularly well-suited for the demands of modern distributed systems. Its principles support the creation of services that are not only technically sound, but also practical for real-world implementation and maintenance. As the digital landscape continues to evolve, REST remains relevant because it embodies timeless principles of good design. This solid foundation explains why, despite newer alternatives like GraphQL or GRPC for specific use cases, REST continues to be the default choice for most web APIs. Okay, so that's it from me today. You should now be able to walk into your tech interview with confidence. This has been Sean from tryaccept.io. Thank you.